Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning how to do coordinate geometry proofs. So here's an example. We have three points A, B, and C, and that will make a triangle. How would we prove that ABC is an isosceles right triangle? So the first thing you want to do is to get a coordinate grid with the X and Y axis. So you want to draw that in and think about, okay, how many units do we want it to be on the X axis and how many units on the Y axis? So you usually want to look at the highest absolute value points. For example, in this case, we have five seems to be the highest absolute value for the X value and six is the highest absolute value for the Y value. And you also look at the negative direction. So a suitable coordinate grid would look something like this, okay? Where you can plot the triangle that is not too small or not too big, that goes outside the grid. So let's plot the points first here. So we select the marker here, and now we plot, for example, point A, which is four and negative one. So we go four units to the right on the X axis and one unit down, and then we have point A. So maybe we can label that point as four comma negative one. And we should call this also the X axis. And here we have a Y axis as well, okay? So we want to label these. Uh, then we're gonna plot point B, which is five comma six. So it's somewhere here, that is point B. And we want to plot point C as well, which is at one, comma three, which is here somewhere. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to connect these points uh, because these points now create a triangle, okay? So you get a ruler and connect these points. So we have this, so we have now segment AC and segment AB. Okay, so the question is, how would you prove that this is an isosceles right triangle? So the way to do this is to use anything where we've learned so far in terms of distance formula, slopes, midpoint formula, and so on and so on. So let's do the isosceles part first, okay? So in this case, we will have to use distance formulas to check, okay? So one thing we can do here is to kind of look at this and see which segments might seem to be congruent, okay? So it seems here that segment AC is congruent to segment BC, okay? So as a matter of fact, you can clearly see this. Let me use a different color here uh, because you can see that you're going over by four units and then you go up by three units, okay? Now the one here, goes down by four units and then over by three units, okay? So you can already see that these seem to be um, three, four, five triangles. So it seems like that segment AC and segment BC are five units, okay? Just because of the Pythagorean theorem, but we will very verify this, okay? Okay, so let's get started with the following. First, we show that segment AC and segment BC are congruent. And by doing that, we prove that this triangle is isosceles first, okay? So you want to write in your proof, number one, show that AC is congruent to segment BC. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, in this case, we just use the distance formula using the points AC and BC, okay? So let's do that. So here we write AC is equal to the square root of four minus one squared plus negative one minus three squared. So we basically apply the distance formula to measure the distance from point A to C. So if you do the math, you end up with a distance of five as we predicted previously. So let's do the same distance from C to B now. So if you apply the distance formula between the points B and C, uh, you end up with the same value of five. Let's also find the distance between A and B since we're at it to make sure that it's an isosceles triangle and not equilateral, even though it didn't ask 
if it's not a collateral or not, it's still okay to check. Okay, so the distance from A to B is five radical two. Okay, so you can clearly see that, um, that this distance is definitely more than five. And as a matter of fact, uh, we might even use this fact to somehow show that it's a, a right triangle. Because as you remember from the rule, uh, the hypotenuse of a right triangle is always the leg times radical two. But with, that will be a different way to prove it. So I'm going to proceed in a different way uh, using the slopes instead, okay? Because usually that's what you see uh, most often on regions exams. But anyways, at this point, you want to write a little statement now in your proof, okay? So here's a statement that you can write uh, that it shows that AC is congruent to BC. Um, so according to the distance formula, AC is equal to BC equal to five, which means that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. Thus, triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle because at least two sides of triangle ABC are congruent. And if you think about for the first part, you're actually only proving that the triangle is isosceles, okay? So basically when you do a coordinate geometry proof, it's not a statement reason table, but it's more like a paragraph proof where you use formulas and numerical values, okay? But when you write a statement, please make sure to write any definitions or theorems or postulate that supports your claim as well. Uh, another thing that I wanted to add here is that for number one, you can say show that those two segments are congruent, okay? Or let me write this in parentheses. You can also show that triangle ABC. So let me copy that. So you can show that triangle ABC is isosceles, okay, here. So you can write that too as an, um, a different way to put this, okay, for case one. Um, okay, so that's up to you. So now for the second case, what else do we want to show here? Well, the second part is now that we want to show that this is a right triangle, okay? And as a matter of fact, if this is five and this is five, and then we have here five radical two, that we know that the largest angle is always opposite the largest side. So therefore this is actually the 90 degree angle. So it's a, an isosceles right triangle, okay? So besides the fact that this is five radical two, that already shows that it's a right triangle, how else could you prove that this is a right triangle? Well, at this point C, what must be true here in terms of slopes for segment AC and BC? The slopes here are negative reciprocals, okay? So let's write that as a second part. So as a second part, you can write show that angle ACB is a right angle or show that a triangle ABC is a right triangle, okay? And again, we're gonna do this using slopes. So if you look at slope AC, uh, you do the math here and you end up with negative four thirds, okay? Uh, which makes sense because if you look at the segment AC, that is a negative slope. You can also see it by the figure here, okay? Uh, let me use a different color so you guys can see it better. So in this case, we're going down by how many units? Negative four, okay? So that's how many units we go down, but then we go over by three units. So the rise over run is gonna be negative four thirds. So yes, it makes sense, okay? Similarly, we're gonna calculate now the slope for segment BC as follows. Okay, so for slope BC, again, six minus three over five minus one, and you end up with actually positive three, four C. Okay, so let me fix that. Okay, so now if you look at these two slopes here, what can you say here? Negative four thirds and three fourths. Well, we can see that these are actually the negative reciprocals of each other, okay? And that shows that they're perpendicular, those two segments, okay? So let's actually write everything down now in a, in a statement that you can write in a proof. So here's a statement that you could write. Since the slopes of segment AC and segment BC are negative reciprocals, segment AC is perpendicular to segment BC. As a matter of fact, if you remember a few lessons ago, 
uh, we learned about that uh, biconditional theorem that states two lines are perpendicular if and only if the slopes of the two lines are negative reciprocals, okay? So that's something also worth mentioning as a theorem. Uh, then you can conclude and say by the definition of perpendicular lines, let me actually fix that definition, okay? By the definition of perpendicular lines, uh, angle ACB is a right angle, okay? And by the definition of right angles or right triangles, triangle ABC is a right triangle, okay? So that's something you could write here for the second statement. Okay, so if you look at this now, for statement one, we showed that triangle ABC is isosceles. We wrote a little statement here. And for statement number two, we showed that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Uh, now, when you do a coordinate geometry proof, please don't forget to include a conclusion. That's something that they're looking for when you take a regions exam, if you ever take one in geometry. Um, so let's write a, a small conclusion here that summarizes the proof, okay? So here's a conclusion that you can write, uh, and that is part three. Since segment AC is congruent to segment BC, and angle ACB is a right angle, then ABC is an isosceles right triangle. And that's basically it as the conclusion because we actually proved both of these uh, for parts one and two, okay? So that's basically how you perform a coordinate geometry proof. Again, please don't forget to sketch the graph first so you have a better idea on the coordinate grid. Um, and then after that, you divide it into parts, okay, that need to be proven. And for each part, always write a small statement that justifies the method you're doing here, okay? And also you write a conclusion. Now often uh, on geometry regions, uh, you can also see geometry coordinate proofs involving quadrilaterals, okay? So you must be also familiar with the quadrilaterals properties and the hierarchy, okay? What I'm trying to say is to basically be familiar with the following table here that you can see. Uh, for example, let's say you want to prove that, you know, something is a square, okay? You will have to first prove it is a parallelogram, then a rectangle, then or rhombus, and then a square, okay? So you have to follow these uh, properties here of quadrilaterals, okay? For example, you can prove that opposite sides are congruent or you know, diagonals bisect each other. In this case, you will have to use the midpoint formula, okay? Uh, so let me show you an example what I mean by that. So for example, ABCD is a quadrilateral. So you have the points, right? A, B, C, and D. And by the way, that's usually how it looks like on the regions. They just give you the grid, but you are the one that needs to draw in the X and Y axis and establish the units as well, okay? But then it says you prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. So if you think about this, you want to prove it's a parallelogram. So you would want to work with the slopes here as well, okay? So that's how you would solve it. So first, as you can see here, you sketch it out. Um, and then you can prove that segment AD is parallel to segment BC, okay? So we have these two segments. Let me highlight them here really quick. So we have this segment and this segment. We prove them first parallel. If you want to, you can prove the other ones parallel as well, okay? Uh, but it actually is sufficient to also prove them congruent, okay? So I'm proving them parallel and congruent. So that's one of the properties that we actually learned. If a quadrilateral has one pair of opposite sides that is both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral must be a parallelogram. And you, again, can refer to the table here with all the properties as well, okay? And then you write a conclusion. So please keep this in mind when you do coordinate geometry proofs to refer to all the properties of a quadrilateral, okay? So that's basically it for today's lesson. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please uh, email me or write a comment in this YouTube video. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.